Welcome to All Home Care Matters, the show where we discuss all things home care with discussions on important age-related matters and topics. Brought to you by Enriched Life Home Care Services, the number one rated home care provider in Michigan by top rated local. Hello, and welcome back to All Home Care Matters. If this is your first time visiting us here to show, we want to say thank you for taking time out to be with us today. We appreciate how valuable everyone's time is, and that's why we try and make each episode here at All Home Care Matters something that will hopefully matter to you. Today, we are very excited and honored to welcome a remarkable guest and friend, Mr. Gary Barg. Gary is the founder of Today's Caregiver Magazine and the founder of the original online caregiver community, caregiver.com. Welcome, Gary. Well, I'm very much looking forward to talking with you. Thank you for the interview, Lance. Absolutely. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. And I want to kind of start, though, because you're such a known um, commodity, I guess, in the caregiver space, Gary. But where did Gary Barg's story start and how did you get involved in this space? Well, um, I won't go back too far. We'll just go back 33 years. My my dad, I'm, I'm in South Florida uh, right now. And uh, so I was uh, born and raised in, in uh, Miami, North Miami Beach. And uh, my family's here, but I was living in Atlanta, uh, getting set up to do work for the 96 Olympics. And I got the call that dad was, uh, he had retired uh, in in uh, in 91 and um, developed bone marrow cancer immediately. And uh, mom went from love of life for 50 years and partner in a new little business they were starting together and travel companion and to caregiver and all that, that wrought. And I had no idea what that was. And I would come in, my brother was in New Orleans, I was in Atlanta, and one of us would be in once every six weeks or so. But you don't know if you for a weekend, you don't know if you're not a caregiver. And and I always like to say, and I am one now. So um, caregivers are a sneaky lot, because mom would pull it all together. Everybody would look great. Everything would look fine for the two days either one of us were in, and we thought we were doing something. So by the time 94 roll, rolled around, um, I heard in her voice one of our weekly phone calls that there was a problem, and I was getting set up to do all this video work for the for the Olympics. And I called my brother and I called my sister, and I said, you know, I'm going to go down for two weeks, figure some things out, help her out, and, and come back to Atlanta and live my life. Well... <laughs> That was my, by then my dad had passed and my grandparents were both, they would, uh, Alzheimer's, cancer, diabetes, strokes, anything you could think of. And mom was caregiver extraordinary again. And that was the hardest, most challenging, painful life and death um, decisions to make, no sleep, two weeks of my life. And right before I left, I said to mom, I'm so glad I came down these two weeks was Look what you were going through. And and she looked at me dumbfounded because what was the worst two weeks of my life was what she was living through the previous four years between my dad and my my grandparents. So I once you see it, you can't unsee it. So I gather all my belongings, came back down to South Florida to be what I like to call a caregiver's caregiver. I was there to help her as she helped her loved ones. And I found the best advice, the best support, the best solutions I found was from the family caregivers I would meet in the emergency waiting rooms, walking in and out of long-term care facilities. And somehow I felt like this information needed to be shared. And we started uh, today's Caregiver Magazine, rolled off the presses July 4th, 1995. Uh, and then caregiver.com, which we got in October of uh, 95. And then we started hosting the fearless caregiver conferences and we just did our 303rd event uh in 47 cities in 26 states and and three books on caregiving so once you see it and you feel it and you you you, you want to support caregivers it's it becomes a mission yeah well and i know gary you you know you had mentioned when we had previously spoken you had gone into bookstores trying to think, you know, I'm, I can find a magazine. I can, and it just, there was nothing there. And I told you when our family first started our company over 10 years ago, you know, and that's much, you know, 
in the future to when you were going through this, we couldn't find anything either. And it just really dumbfounded me that, you know, there's 50 some million, you know, family caregivers. We all know the statistic, but yet there's no real tangible resources readily available for these 50 some million unpaid family caregivers. And you just, you know, through your ingenuity, just decided, you know what, since there's nothing there, I'm going to make something be there. And, you know, you started with the, you know, today's care, uh, the today's caregiver magazine. And I know you were good enough to send us some copies of your books and the magazines I got sitting here next to me. And, you know, it just, one of the things, and I just want to get your opinion on this. One of the things that I think really resonated the most with me that I want to resonate with other people is a lot of the interviews you've done, you know, are with celebrities or, you know, people of notoriety. But the one common theme is they were all caregiving for a family caregiver. You know, yeah. the celebrity status didn't take that away. Their notoriety didn't remove it. And they were left dealing with the same things that, you know, your mother was dealing with back then and that you were facing. What What do you want people to know about caregiving that may not have experienced it yet? Or maybe they're going through it and they're still having trouble finding the resources yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I call caregiving the great equalizer. You know, at some point, yes, having having money, having support is helpful, but you're also still that person's spouse or parent or or son or daughter, and you're still a human being. And I found the our our second book, um, uh, caregiving ties that binds, is with about 150 of the 250 300. Caregivers with famous faces, I like to call it, uh, celebrity interviews I've done. And I found that the humanity is what stands out. The connection. This is not a movie star. This is not, this is somebody dealing with the painful issue of, of caregiving. And the mask is is down and they're not doing the, you know, the 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 the, the, the press interviews for their for their movies or whatever. And, and the humanity is what shines through. And and that's what I find is a very um, important part of family caregiving is that, yeah, there's 56.7 million or so, depending on what numbers you you follow caregivers in, in, in this country alone. And at some point, each one of us think we're absolutely alone. No one's walked the walk. No one's with us. No one gets it. But that's not true. Right. Even if you're in the most rural areas where you come online or you go to support groups or or you reach out, that you know, one in five people around you are caring. So it's it's the it's the importance of reaching out, sharing your story, asking mm -hmm. questions, never stopping until you get clear, uh, concise, and authoritative answers. Don't take an easy no from anybody, even a, a medical professional. And you become the CEO of caring for your loved one. You become what we ostensibly call a fearless caregiver. That's the role you play. And I know and, you you wrote a book called The Fearless Caregiver. What? How do you define a fearless caregiver? A fearless caregiver is, is one that knows that you have an equal role to play in your loved one's care as any other member of the care team. And I always say you're the you're the manager of the team. In in the book, it's, I think we've done four iterations of the Fearless Caregiver book and 303 Fearless Caregiver conferences. Um, the, the concept is... Uh, in the one of the first pages of the book, we call the um, the traditional caregiver paradigm: doctor on top, everyone else below, caregiver off to the side, dotted line, waiting in the waiting room, being told what to do. And and we've come up with the fearless caregiver paradigm, where it's actually a circle: the doctor, the therapist, the the care manager, and you are on top. You are the manager. You are the support system for your loved one. And at some point, the doctor is the most important. At some point, the therapist is the most important. And in the middle of that is your loved one. So you're not in the dotted line off to the side. You're the one making the decisions. You're the one who needs the support. And so for, for us, it's a job role you take on. It's the most important job role you ever take on is being that, that fearless caregiver. And part of that is reaching out and not being alone and not isolating yourself and you know, listening to, to 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 your show and coming to our fearless caregiver conferences, and you know the, the the as I said, the best advice and support I got when I started was from my fellow caregivers. We all wanted to reach out and find support. That 
I think the the primary thing I want to say to any caregiver is you are not alone. By far, you're not alone. And in your community and online or wherever you, you find uh, support, there are people going through this, walking the walk beside you, that are looking to find you. The Area Agents on Aging, the Alzheimer's Association, American Cancer, whoever it is, it we just need to reach out and let them help us. Absolutely. And I know you talk about the importance of these caregivers becoming fearless caregivers and that summarize why that's important to them. It's it's good for your loved one. It's good for your, you. It's good for your family members for you to take on this CEO role, to be fearless, to stand up to the system when it doesn't stand up for you. I, I always say there's two sets of three words every caregiver needs to know. And one is when your loved one is challenging and and, and maybe they're, they're sundowning or maybe there's some emotional issue you look deep in the eyes you 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 hold your their 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 face in your hands and you say i love you because love and respect who respects you and who loves you are the two last things you ever let go of and the other one is not to say to your loved one but whenever you're being held back by the system whenever you're on the phone with the insurance company and the, and people are snowballing you and they're and they're not supporting you you say who's your supervisor so that's your role is to make sure that you care for your loved one, learn all you can, partner with your loved one's uh, care team, and primarily take care of yourself. Because I always like to say caring for yourself is job one for any caregiver. Because if you fall apart because you took yourself out of the circle of care, who's going to step in and care for you and them? Absolutely. Great, great advice. And that's so true. I, you know, we tell families all the time, they feel either guilty or they feel selfish to take that time for their own self-care. And in reality, it's not being guilt. You don't, you shouldn't feel guilty and it's not selfish. It's actually giving because you taking care of yourself is allowing you to continue taking care of your loved ones. Brilliant. Thank you for that. You know, yeah. the, it, 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 you know, I always say that the, the things that caregivers don't deserve are guilt, shame, fear, embarrassment, you know, the pain of caregiving, that we need to find a way to push those off because we have taken on this job role and this job is the most important job we'll, we'll ever have. And it is learning all we can to care for our loved one, care for our family members and care for ourselves. Because as, as you say, you know, if, if, you know, if you don't care for yourself, who's going to step in and care for both of you? Absolutely. Let's talk about your reverse gift list. What exactly is a reverse gift list? The reverse gift list is one of the tools that we have as a family caregiver to be the CEO of Caring for a Loved One, Inc. You know, the, the CEO of Ford doesn't go on the line and fill the, fill the tires uh, on the cars rolling off the assembly line. And you need to find out what are those bite-sized, easy, manageable tasks that you have to do yourself, that take over your life, that have nothing to do with direct care for your loved one. And a lot of times we're, we feel like we don't want anybody to step in, see what we're going through. Maybe we're embarrassed for our loved one, the condition they might be in. Maybe we're ashamed. Maybe we just feel like we're the only one that can do it. Well, no one's asking you to give up your your role. No one's asking you to, you know, okay, I'm, hand this over. Give me your social security number and your bank account. But there are things you can hand over. For example, when the neighbor goes to the grocery store, maybe they can knock on your door and say, do you have a small list, you know, and some some cash? And can you pick these things up for me? They go to the cleaners, they go to the pharmacy. You know, maybe uh, somebody you work with that wants to help, can't figure out what to do, come over and, and, and cook dinner and talk about anything but caregiving. Maybe you're... you're um, your sister's son is good with cars and lives one community over. Let him come over and and uh, and and change the oil in the car. The thing is, the secret is people want to help and they don't know how. And we leave them out. A lot of times we push them away. So by doing this reverse gift list, you're asking for gifts, but you're also giving gifts. Because I've never seen a situation where you ask somebody for some support, something manageable, some something easy, something within their, their realm of doing that they're not thrilled to help. Right. 
you're helping them by letting them help you. Absolutely. And that's, that's a reverse gift list. That's wonderful. Now, you also talk about the family care list. And, you know, I want to just show viewers and listeners that you have this wonderful getting friends and family members to help pamphlet that uh, you had published. Talk about the family care list, because I think that's one that out of all the issues that we encounter, the family conflict, strife, disagreements, you could have families that have been perfectly, you know, cordial to each other. They have wonderful close bonds and ties. But then when a parent gets sick, all of a sudden you can see a crack starting to divide because one or two or more of the siblings have one idea about what should be done. The others have another idea. And the one person who might be the POA, the power of attorney, they have the ultimate say. And now they're getting all this information from two sides of the issue. And I think it's important to have that understanding and start that dialogue before there's a crisis rather than when there's a crisis, right? Oh, without a doubt. You know, uh, family caregiving could destroy a family without firm uh, foundation and enhance a family with, which does have firm communication and foundation. I mean, it's the thing you want to do is have these conversations before anything happens. You don't know what's going to happen, but you the, the the care list is what are the things we need to know about? Where are the insurance policies? Um, uh, you know, don't give me your bank account information, but if something happens to you, how do I get that? Don't leave things, you know, in, in safe deposit boxes that I need to have immediately if something happens to you, unless I'm actually also on that box. Who's your attorney? What what are these things that I just need to have implemented if something emergency happens? And frankly, I, I learned this from experience. My my uh, uh, dad took ill very quickly, and um, for the at first part of his you know his being ill, he was just literally, you know, out of it. And um, he was always in charge. And I remember him sitting at the dining room table with the big old fashioned checkbook, writing out checks. And I didn't, I, uh, you know, when he first got, got ill, we all surrounded uh, mom and we didn't know anything. And it, it took months to figure out, you know, who needs to be paid? What needs, what do we need to know about? What are these opportunities? What do we need to do about the, about, uh, whatever pensions he might have. And if you just have those in a place, even if you can't access it until there's a challenge, um, it makes the, the first part of your caregiving so much easier. And then, as you said, the getting friends and family members to help is one of our fearless caregiver uh, guides. We have one for the holidays and one for uh, clinical trials and one for Alzheimer's. And um, the idea is that you do maybe dry runs. You do walk through these things. You do talk about who's better at this, who's better at that, who can I, when my, my mom took ill, my sister, brother, and I are all living here now. And we just literally fell into the roles that we fell into that were more comfortable to us. You know, I, I dealt with the, the medication and the doctors and my brother dealt with the insurances. And this was during COVID and my sister lived in the same building as my mom. So she was with her all day. Um, and then my brother and I would uh, uh, stay with her. We'd alternate nights. And we found out where we fit in the role of, you know, of, of caregiver and what worked for us and what didn't work for us. So that communication is, is, is vital to successful caregiving. Gary, so for people who might just be on this beginning steps of the journey, you know how overwhelming it is. Like you said, you know, you all gathered around mom and what do we do now? Families still encounter that daily. I encountered that as a family caregiver myself. And what advice or tips would you give them who are just starting out on this journey and they're feeling that pressure, they're feeling that overwhelming sensation? You know, I have kids still living at home. I have a job, I have bills, but yet, mom or dad or even a spouse or even a child now needs me as their full-time caregiver, what do I do? What is your recommendation? I think you take a deep breath. You count to 10. You, you have a family meeting and you try not to bring in old grievances, which is hard because this is so, so challenging. And you um, parcel out the responsibilities and you 
you um, learn everything you can, hopefully, you know, through, through your shows, through caregiver.com, through reaching out to the Alzheimer's Association or whatever local association, their agents on aging, uh, and don't isolate yourself. One of the things a lot of times, especially if it's a, a senior issue, you might want to um, enlist a geriatric care manager in your community, maybe just to get the plan in place. You don't need them, you know, spend the money with them week after week, month after month. Create a plan for us. Look at what we are going through. Look at the challenges we have and give us a plan that we can we can live on and 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 and, and work through. Because you guys now have the most important job that you can ever have, which is making sure your loved one or loved ones have the best possible care that they that, that they can have uh, in the situation they're in. And it's 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 challenging because the I, I don't you know I listen I've been through this now I'm a serial caregiver so I understand the emotions involved so I'm not being Pollyanna I'm just saying if you're able to step back from it and say okay. I understand the challenges I'm going to face with my sister Jeannie or my brother Tommy or whatever. I need to get the the the, the best advice, the best support I can, and then walk the walk. And that's why being a fearless caregiver is a job role. And that's why we call it being the CEO of Caring for Your Loved One, because you are managing more services, more emotion, more history than you'd ever thought you'd have to. But if you do it right and you come out the other end, it'll make you stronger than you ever thought you could have been. Absolutely. And, you know, I like to use this as an example, and it's not to minimize one or degrade one over the other. But I explain to people, it's a lot like when you're expecting your first child. You know, you can have everybody in the world tell you what an amazing experience it is, how your life is going to change and all the things. But until you've actually seen that child born and held it in your arms no words or examples will ever do it justice. And it's a lot like being a family caregiver. People can tell you, oh, you have no idea what I'm going through. And they really don't unless they've gone through it. Yeah, what well, Mrs. Carter said, you know, you, there are only four kinds of people in the world. Those who have been caregivers, those who will be caregivers, who are currently caregivers, and those who will need caregivers. Yes. And I always say truer words have never been spoken. So we and you you mentioned uh, being a new parent well there are there are books there are courses the medical community has set you up for that you know within realm what your what your steps are going to be um the, the going to college or or any anything any life change that you might have generally speaking there's there's a plan for there are people on your side there are people that are are, are, are there with you except for caregiving you know, you, you get that metaphorical phone call in the middle of the night. Dad fell. There's been an accident. The tests have come back. Mom's found wandering. And you walk through this Alice in Wonderland looking looking glass of acronyms. And everyone's yelling at you and wanting to know what you want to do. And, you, you know, that's where it's important for them to reach out and find out that there are services. There are support. There are people who have been through this before. And there are people looking to hold their hand as they walk through it. Absolutely. Again, and I think it's a really good uh, metaphor in the sense that uh, uh, as a new parent, there is there are systems in place. We want the same thing for being a new caregiver. Yes, absolutely. And there's a lot of similarities too at, you know, at certain points. Uh, Gary, let's talk about too um, your newsletter. We'll have it up on the screen here for our viewers and listeners, as well as in the show notes. How can people sign up for the uh, caregiver.com newsletter? Well, it's, excuse me, we do two newsletters a week. They're free, my favorite four letter word. And um, they go to caregiver.com, sign up for the newsletter. Uh, the things we learn from our fellow caregivers on the road as we host the Fearless Caregiver Conferences, the interviews that we do. Um, on Tuesday, we highlight uh, a fearless caregiver advocate. People can send in the stories about their own fearless caregiving. And we can highlight them on our Tuesday newsletter with their picture and their story. So other caregivers can look and go, hey, I I can I can do that too. Well, that's a great piece of advice. Yeah. That, that's what we learned about the our fearless caregiver conferences is that you you know the best advice is going to come from the questions the caregivers 
ask and the answers they give to their fellow caregivers. Yes. So, so it's, it's, I hope to think it's a digital or virtual community that people can share um, and we can share uh, twice a week through the newsletters. And then where would you like them to go to sign up for the next Fearless Caregiver Conference? Everything's at caregiver.com. Um, the next few conferences are are listed there. Um, we're, we'll, we're at 303. We're doing um, uh, 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 Boca Raton, Florida. We're doing Port St. Lucie. We're doing Casa Grande, Arizona. That's going to wow. be fun. Uh, we've been to Arizona a few times. Uh, we're doing Williamsburg, Virginia, which should be lovely, lovely event. New Haven, uh, and then a few other Floridas. And um, it's it's very exciting. Our first event was in 98 in Fort Lauderdale with uh, Robert Urich. I don't know if you remember the TV star, Cowboy star, wonderful, wonderful man. He passed uh, a few years later. Um, and we've learned and shared the things that caregivers have taught us at every event, at future events. I mean, so a caregiver asks a question in, you know, in New Haven, and I realized that that question was answered by another caregiver 10 years earlier at an event in Nashville, and I'm able to at least share that, you know, mess, Johnny Appleseed, that message yeah. to, to their fellow caregivers. Well, and I know we're, uh, we're twisting Gary's arm to hopefully have a fearless caregiver conference here in Michigan. I look forward to it. That'll be fun. Um, Gary, this is just such an honor and a treat to you know speak with you. I know when we originally spoke, I had used the analogy that I'm very fond of for those who have laid the path and have come before us. And I said, you know, for us, we look at it as we're standing on the shoulders of giants. And I consider you one of the premier giants of this industry. And I think it's better off for what you've devoted the last 30 plus years of your life to. And I think everybody owes you a thank you for that. But I want to ask Gary Barg to go back to 94, 95. And would you have imagined where you would be at today when you first set out on this journey? Was that ever conceptualized or thought of? I, I was younger and my knees didn't creak when I stood up. So I knew that that's a difference. No, we just jumped in because we knew somebody had to jump in. I was a video producer in those days. There was no YouTube. There was no internet. So it just seemed easier, that's a funny word at this point, um, to create this in print and uh, the magazine and share it around. I, I From that very first uh, uh, magazine I picked up in uh, the 4th of July, 1995, uh, for a few, until the internet came around, actually, um, I would drive them in a U-Haul truck from uh, the North Keys to Southern Palm Beach, walk in and out of long-term care facilities, in and out of hospital waiting rooms, because you could do that in those days, uh, pre-9-11. Pre, um, and um, I would listen as caregivers were pick up the, the magazine. And that's how I got everything we do is in service to and because of the family caregivers uh, that we support and even the ones that we we haven't met yet you know that's so my thanks is to the family caregivers because um that's where that's what we're doing we're channeling their information their advice again one quick story yeah. um, go ahead oh, i was saying yes please you said one quick story go right ahead one quick story um one of those first times i was driving the magazine around i stopped in a main uh, waiting room of a hospital in West Palm Beach. And I put down the magazine on this large glass table and just sat down exhausted. And this was 95. And two older ladies, they'd be 150 now, but they, they were lovely. And they sat down next to me. I kept thinking they might have been sisters. And one of them picked up the, the magazine and we always like to say it's a people magazine for caregivers in the sense, not that it's all celebrities, but that it's easy, it's accessible. The, the slashes across the cover don't say J-Lo's diet. It, they'll say something like diabetic foot care tips, which yeah. that first magazine did. And one of these ladies picked it up, opened it. it I never forget, a Dr. Fishman did a top 10 tips for diabetic foot care. 
And she turned to her, I'll say sister, and she said, see, Marge, white socks. I kept telling you white socks. And I thought, oh, we're on to something. We're on to something. Wow, that's incredible. Well, my next question was going to be, do you have a favorite story from a celebrity that really stands out? I know it might be hard to pick just one, but do you have one that comes to mind when you look back at all the incredible interviews you've done? Well, I mean, there, there, there are a few of them. I remember um, uh, uh, Debbie Reynolds. She, she came to a few of the events and just lovely, very quiet, very petite. And when I uh, I was introduced to her in the green room, she seemed very frail. And I thought, oh, okay, well, it's Debbie Reynolds. She's adorable. And she just stare, looks at you in the eyes and she was brilliant. And we walked through the kitchen to the to the area where the, the conference room where all the caregivers were and stood on the stage. I looked next to me. She was 10 feet tall with stars shooting out of her fingers. Wow. She became Debbie Reynolds on that walk from the green room to the kitchen. I thought, that's a lesson. And Della Reese and my brother were, we're we're sharing uh, uh, pie recipes in 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 uh, in uh, in Los Angeles, and in New Haven, Linda Dano came with her dogs. Well, forget it. Me and dogs, forget it. So she and I were sitting in the green room playing with her dogs. To my brother, finally came in and said, I-, "I can't stall them any longer. We have to get going." So it's the humanity, it's the people, it's a, that that and the giving. The, ama- the amazing giving that these caregivers with famous faces have, um, that they just stood, answered questions, interacted, and loved on this audience. I always say when you have 300 family caregivers in the room and a celebrity who is a caregiver as well, all you have is 301 yeah. caregivers. That's a great point. When you um, when you go around to these conferences or you get your emails or letters or, you know, people are reaching out to you, has there been a story that really resonated with you personally the most about over the thousands you've probably received over the years that where you're like, I've really done what I set out to do? Um, the one in, in, in Philly a bunch, a bunch of years ago, a gentleman walked in, big guy, thought it was like, well, he was a football player. And he didn't look happy. And I was at the registration. I thought, okay, I'm going to get it now. He's going to punch me. And he walked up. He said, my wife's doctor said I need to come to this thing. So he went in and sat down at one of the round tables up front. And there was interaction. The caregivers were asking questions. The panels were answering. Panels were asking. Caregivers were answering. It was a real love fest. And he raised his hand. And I thought, now I'm going to get punched. I know it. And I walked over to the mic and he stood up and he hugged me. He said, I thought I was alone. And he cried. And I thought I was alone and I'm not alone. And thank you for that. Wow. And he came back year after, you know, until his, until his wife passed. Um, one other quick Philly event, actually, um, uh, maybe three years after that, we were um, in the Midtown area of, of Philly and um Della Reese with us was with us. And that was a love fest. And she she and I stood on the stage and she, she just answered questions so there were no questions. Hundreds of caregivers interacted. And I remember about three weeks later, I got an email out of the blue from a caregiver who said, Um, I'm all alone. Nobody gets what I'm going through. I don't know what I can do. This stress is just overwhelming. And I saw your email. I thought I would just share this with you. And I said, well, where are you? Where do you live? She lived three blocks from where that love fest was three weeks earlier. Oh. And I said, we got more work to do. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, Gary, I want to ask you one last question. If we talk again in a few years, where will today's caregiver and caregiver.com be? Um, wherever caregivers need them to be. I mean, basically, who knows if it's uh, now we're zooming, you know, but um, we 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 did the the first uh, events up until March of 2020 in person. And then obviously we did uh, about six virtual events, which were fine. And people were interacting and they were chat, but virtual hugs are not as good as real hugs. So we 
And instead of once a month, it was 875 days between the, the last one in March of 2020 and the next one in July of, of uh, 2022. So I never want to go that long. But wherever the caregivers need me to be and whatever they need us to be and uh, whatever support we can offer, I don't know what the technology is going to be like then, but we'll we'll be on top of it. No wind in sight. Well, on one hand, unfortunately, you know, on the other hand, if we can help um, support, you humanize the system and professionalize the family caregiver, we're doing our job. Absolutely. Well, I have a new tagline for you. Today's caregiver will be here for tomorrow's caregiver. Oh, thank you. And we were here for yesterday's caregiver too. Yes, yes. Well, Gary Barg, thank you so much for your time. It has been a real honor and privilege for us and for me to you know speak with you today. And we're here to support today's caregiver and caregiver.com however we can. And hopefully we'll get to see each other soon in the future or talk again. I look forward to it. Thank you for this, Lance, and thanks for everything you do uh, for caregivers through your programs. Thank you. Have a great day, Gary. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today here at All Home Care Matters. All Home Care Matters is here to help families as they navigate these long-term care issues. We invite you to visit us at allhomecarematters.com, where there's a private, secure, fillable form where you can give us feedback, show ideas, or if you have questions. Every form is read and responded to. And remember, you can listen to the show on any of your favorite podcast streaming platforms or watch the show on our official YouTube channel. Just make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. We'd also like to say thank you again to Mr. Gary Barg for joining us today here to discuss today's Caregiver Magazine and Caregiver.com and all the tremendous work that he has done. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time here at All Home Care Matters. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to you joining us again on another episode of All Home Care Matters. To learn more about the show and to connect with us, visit us at allhomecarematters.com.